When Elizabeth Warren dropped out, we were told to give her and her supporters a lot of space. Let them grieve, you know, allow them some time for self-care. Let her go on Saturday Night Live as people, you know, lose their homes and die due to a lack of health insurance. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because Bernie Sanders dropped out and we're not given that same courtesy. Nobody is saying, let's let the Bernie bros have a little bit of time for self-care. The establishment, uh, almost immediately after Bernie Sanders dropped out, told us all to fall in line or eat shit. Because Bernie Bros was the number one trending hashtag on Twitter, along with, you know, uh, other themes that we see from the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. Blue no matter who, bye bye Bernie, and vote for Biden. And, you know, it's funny. Corporate Democrats, they're not even wasting a minute to, you know, demand that Bernie Sanders put in the work to get Joe Biden elected. It's not Joe Biden who's got to do that. It's Bernie Sanders who is obligated to make sure that Joe Biden is dragged across the finish line. David Axelrod tweeted, Bernie Sanders bowed to the math in acknowledging that Joe Biden will be the nominee. He used the time today to laud his movement, but if his goal is to defeat real Donald Trump, he'll have to make a more affirmative case for Biden and why his supporters should support him. So it's not Joe Biden who has to make the case for Joe Biden. It's Bernie Sanders who has to make the case for Joe Biden. Okay, so um, what does Joe Biden have to do? Like, realistically speaking, I'm asking neoliberals, what do you believe Joe Biden is responsible for doing? Like, does he have any role in winning himself or does that all fall on the shoulders of Bernie Sanders? Like, I genuinely am asking earnestly. I want to know because I don't believe that they think Joe Biden has to do anything. I think that uh, we are supposed to shut the fuck up. Uh, not just vote for Joe Biden, but enthusiastically do it and worship Joe Biden. You, you know, it, that's the way that it seems. Um, and if we're not uh, being told to fall in line, then we're being guilt tripped because Marcos Melitzas tweeted out, I'm not voting for Joe Biden translates to, I want Trump to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to which Joy Reid responded, succinctly put. Now, again, I don't want Donald Trump to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But why are we to blame when Ruth Bader Ginsburg should have resigned when Obama was president? Like, why didn't she do that? Maybe it's the case that our entire democracy shouldn't hinge on the health of someone who's, what, 90 plus years old? Maybe our system itself is a little bit flawed if that's what it has come down to, you know? But again, this will never be on their backs. This is on your back. It's all on you to make sure that Joe Biden is victorious in November. And if he does win, it's going to be uh, despite you. And if he uh, loses, it will definitely be because of you. You will be given no credit. You will only be lambasted. And on top of that, former Hillary staffers literally planned a bye-bye Bernard Zoom call that they ended up canceling to celebrate the death of his campaign. So, I mean, look... <laughs> The body of Bernie 2020 hasn't even gone cold yet, and they are already jumping down our throats, telling us to eat shit and shut the fuck up. Like, these people are absolutely just, I don't even know how to describe them. Even Neera Tandon wasted no time saying, hey guys, let's unite. Neera Tandon of all people. Like, the nerve, the gall, after you spit in our faces, to say unite, to even use that word. Hilarious. But it's not just corporate Democrats, because corporate media is also joining the chorus of Bernie Sanders haters. And they're angry that Bernie, in exiting the Democratic primary, which is what they wanted, isn't kissing Joe Biden's ass enough. Take a look. What struck me the most there is Senator mm -hmm. Sanders, in saying goodbye, did acknowledge that Joe Biden had an insurmountable lead but he didn't say anything nice about Joe Biden. He did not say he'd spoken to him. He did not say he would work with him. He said it was imperative to beat President Trump, but there was no big embrace of Joe Biden. He said nicer things about Joe Biden back during some of the Democratic debates than he said in saying goodbye. It was really noteworthy uh, that that was not part of his message at all. In fact, it's funny you say that as he was speaking, I was texting with people in and around Joe Biden asking if he had gotten a phone call because it was so uh, glaringly absent. What struck me the most here is 
he didn't say anything nice about Joe Biden. Um, and then Dana Bash chimes in and she says, I was texting people in and around Joe Biden asking if he had gotten a phone call because it was glaringly absent. Uh, counterpoint, he did, you just didn't notice. Today, I congratulate Joe Biden, a very decent man, who I will work with to move our progressive ideas forward. Now, let me be clear here. Bernie Sanders is wrong. Joe Biden is not a decent man. He is a bad person who uh, would veto a policy that would save lives. And on top of that, he has voted for numerous wars that have uh, led to death and destruction. He allegedly raped Tara Reid. And uh, other women have accused him of inappropriate touching. His policies are dog shit. Almost everything that he's implemented or fought for has been damaging to women and the progressive movement. Remember Anita Hill? He's not a decent person. Bernie is wrong, but Bernie is saying what he thinks he needs to say. But even though he said that, it's still not good enough for them. It's still not good enough for them. Bernie Sanders, in the event he literally were to spread Joe Biden's ass cheeks and kiss his anus... That wouldn't be enough. They want you to completely roll over and declare Joe Biden God. And maybe, just maybe, they would think that you've done enough to appease the king. How about this? Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off, all of you. Fuck your guilt trips. Uh, fuck all of your, you know, uh, nagging at the Bernie bros, calling us toxic. How about you all go fuck yourselves? Because here's the thing. This wasn't about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was just a vessel for a policy program that would save and change lives. Not just that, but save the world for future generations. So this isn't about, you know, our dreams of a Bernie presidency being crushed. This is us dealing with the reality that you seem to not care about, that our planet is not going to be habitable for future generations. We are dealing with the reality that Medicare for all will never pass so long as the corporate wing of the Democratic Party continues to reign supreme, and that means people are going to die every single year. This is what we're dealing with, a really grim future, a reality that you decided uh, was going to be hijacked by the corporate wing of the party. Like, you already ran the party into the ground, lost a thousand seats in state legislatures across the country during Obama's tenure, and now you're saying, you know what? We still need control of the party because we're not done skull-fucking it yet. We need to fuck it a little bit longer, make sure it's a little bit more broken before we inevitably hand it off to your generation. Hopefully you won't be too mad at us. Wink, wink. I mean, these people are just, they're so insufferable. And if they've demonstrated anything to the left that I want the left to take away, it's that we can't work with these people. We can't work with them. Like, you would be just as uh, successful trying to work with fucking Republicans. You've got to understand that Democrats and Republicans, they subscribe to the same neoliberal, pro-capitalist cult ideology, albeit to different degrees, but it's the same ideology nonetheless. Republicans just want full-on open markets. You know, Democrats, they want a few tweaks around the edges. So working with them when their ideology is completely opposed to everything that we stand for, it's not going to to work like it makes for really strange bedfellows that relationship is impossible because you know these are irreconcilable differences so you've got to understand that these people they can't be worked with they can't be reasoned with they are your enemy the democratic party is your enemy and the quicker the left understands that the better off i think we'll all be because you can't actually affect change if you don't know what you're dealing with if you don't know who your enemy is right so the democratic party all of the leaders there, they are your enemy. They are the barrier to change that we have to break down if we ever want to win. Now, that's not to say that Republicans are any better. That's not to say that Donald Trump is better than Joe Biden. I don't believe that. But what I am saying is that this two-party duopoly has been absolutely crushing, not just to Americans, but to the planet as a whole. And you can't delude yourself into thinking that we can somehow win over these people. No, they have to be thoroughly defeated. As I said before, either they've got to defeat us entirely or we've got to defeat them. But this marriage can't last. It won't last because working with Democrats, 
when you know their views are diametrically opposed with everything that we stand for it's not possible we want medicare for all they're fighting to stop that we want a green new deal they're fighting to stop that now they say they support a green new deal but again that's that's just lip service right when you look at what joe biden stands for his record on climate change does it really mean anything to you when he says he supports a green new deal of course not so you know the path to change is direct grassroots organizing and making sure that we are uncivil disruptive and as uh quote unquote toxic as they say we are because guess what you can't just sit idly by and go out to brunch while this party continues to run the country into the ground and allow fascists to win. We have to absolutely get even more rowdy than we were before, organize strikes, make sure that we let them know that just because Bernie lost, you know, we're not just going to roll over and die. We're not going to succumb to the pressures of the establishment. We will not be placated or co-opted. They can all go fuck themselves because they haven't heard the last of us. And we need to let them know that that's the case. So I don't know what else to say. Uh, I will just say that uh, Democrats are completely shameless, but I'm already preaching to the choir. I think you all know that by now.